I built this system for my review of the Gigabyte M27Q, a monitor with a KVM built in, making it the, the perfect option for an enthusiast Linux gamer who wants to be able to game on both Windows and on Linux and do it pretty seamlessly. Now you can check out my video for that monitor, the review of it up in the cards above, but this video is a, a sort of beginner's guide from a beginner myself in how to set this up. Now this is a getting started guide, this isn't going to be incredibly in depth and I can't hold a candle to the likes of Wendo from Level 1 Tech so if you want uh, genuine and uh, expert advice on anything VFIO and Linux in general then go check out his channels Level 1 Tech and his Linux channel as well and go subscribe to them as they are a much better source of information than I can be. Now with that said, let's jump into the hardware and then we'll go through all of the software. Starting with the hardware I have here, I'm using a Ryzen 9 3900X. You technically don't need something this high end, but having this many cores, 12 total or 24 threads, means that I can split the CPU perfectly in half and give 12 threads to the Windows VM and still have 12 threads for the Linux system. You can obviously swap that around and you can use a, a lower end chip if you fancy, but that's what I've got available, so I'm gonna use that. I'm also using 32 gigs of RAM for the same reason. I can split it nicely in half. And the motherboard that you use here is actually really important. That's what determines how easily you'll have or how easy of a time you'll have passing your second graphics card through to your Windows VM. What you're looking for is good IOMMU groupings. You can find this by generally just searching the board and IOMMU groupings on Google, but uh, places like r slash VFIO on Reddit or the level on text forums are great resources to both find existing information and to ask as well because they're great communities. And as for graphics cards, you will need two. You need to pass a full graphics card directly through to the virtual machine to get uh, basically good performance from it. And so what I'm using here is a 2080i for my host system and a 2060 for my uh, pass through my Windows VM. Now normally most people switch those around as most people use their Windows VM for gaming more exclusively and then use a lower tier graphics card for the, the host OS, in our case Ubuntu, but this is what I've got available and how I had it set up, so that's what we'll use for now. And a quick note on graphics card vendors, or I suppose AMD versus Nvidia, you can use either, it's not like a Hackintosh where you must use AMD, although driver support on Linux does go in AMD's favor, generally speaking, and so you might want to go for those, but if you already have Nvidia cards, lying around or if you're picking them up on the used market and video cards do tend to be a little bit more plentiful and so you can use either although AMD might be slightly easier for you. Either way whichever you choose you need to set up your system get it all built and then we can go and create our bootable USB stick. Now I'm using a second Windows PC here you can use a laptop or even do it on the system itself it's entirely up to you, but either way, to create the USB stick, at least on Windows, it's pretty simple. Grab the ISO for Ubuntu 20.0.4 LTS from Ubuntu's website and download a tool called Rufus. It's super easy to use, it's free. All you do is pick the ISO file that you just downloaded from Ubuntu's site. Make sure that your drive, the one that you want to install Ubuntu to, is selected, press start, let it do its thing, and then once it's done, you can press close and plug a USB stick into your you know, Linux system. Then you can boot the PC up. I would recommend spamming the delete key to get into the BIOS before we actually go in and boot and install Ubuntu, as there are a couple of settings that we'll want to change first. First off, you will want to enable XMP if you haven't already, either on Intel or AMD. It gets you some effectively free performance from your RAM, so feel free to do so if you haven't already. And then we can look for the uh, IOMMU and virtualization options. On AMD, you're looking for specifically the IOMMU option. You need to set that to enabled. And on AMD, it's called SVM. On Intel, I think it's normally VT-X or VT-D. You want to enable any of those options whichever you can find, as that lets us run you know, virtualized machines or virtualization on the CPU actually well. We can then save and exit out of the BIOS and then boot to our USB stick. It's normally F12 to get the boot uh, option list, or you can just set it to be your boot priority number one in the BIOS 
if you'd prefer. Either way, once you boot to your USB stick, you can press install Ubuntu and go through the setup. A word of warning, if you're using NVIDIA cards, do not press the uh, log me in automatically checkbox, nor the download and install third party drivers checkbox. That bricked my system, and I believe it's a bug with the auto login and the uh, NVIDIA driver, or the version of the NVIDIA driver that it automatically downloads and installs. And so I had to reinstall the OS to get that to work. Bit of a pain, but there's the heads up, don't do that. So once you've got it installed, we can start working on the pass-through. Now personally, I like to check the IOMME groupings and get the PCIe IDs first, so let's do that. You want to open up a terminal window, Control alt c opens it for you, and run sudo nano slash etc etc slash default slash grub so that we can enable IOMMU in the grub file. You want to find the line that says grub underscore cmd line underscore linux underscore default and inside those quotation marks if you're using the amd system then you want to add amd underscore iomu equals on and iomu equals pt. Press Control O to write that file out and then enter, then pr press Control X to exit, and then you can run sudo update dash grub, and once that's done, you can reboot the system. Once the system has rebooted, you can then open a terminal window again and run dmesg with a pipe, and then grep amd dash vi. The output should look something like this, and that will tell you that IOMMU is enabled. So if IOMMU is enabled, we can now check the actual IOMMU groupings for especially our secondary graphics card that we're gonna be passing through, and any extra things like USB hubs that you might want to pass through as well. So what you wanna do is, still in terminal, uh, create a bash script file with the, the script that will be linked in the description down below or I'll put it up on screen for you and you can type it out if you really want to but either way the way to do that is to write sudo nano um, and then a file name like ommugroups.sh that will open nano with a new file uh, type out or paste this bash script Again, write out control O and enter and then control X. And then we have to make it a runnable file. So chmod or sudo chmod 755 uh, iomu And then you can run the file with dot slash iomugroups.sh. The output should give you a list of all of your IOMME groups and the devices in them. What you're looking for is to find your secondary graphics card. In my case, that is the 2060. And you can see that that's in, it, in a group on its own. Now, technically it's not in a group on its own as the uh, audio controller and the USB controller that's on board are in the same group, but that's fine because we're gonna be passing all of those through anyway. You also want to check if you're not using something like the Gigabyte M27Q that has the KVM built in via the USB-C cable that the graphics card already has, you will want to pass a USB 3 uh, or USB hub through uh, there as well. And so you will want to find a USB hub that's isolated or in its own group so that we can pass that through too. Now to save us time later, what you'll need to do is take a note of the PCI IDs for all of the parts of your graphics card and any extra you know, USB hubs or anything else that you want to pass through. Those IDs look like, I think it's 10E, 10DE colon 1E07 for this graphics card. Those PCIe IDs are the things that we're gonna use to identify them. So take a note of all of the ones that you want to pass through and then we can carry on. So now we can go and install all of the programs and tools that we'll need to make our VM and make all of this happen. So run the command that's on screen or in the description down below. It's gonna be easier to copy and paste it, but you know, if you're a mad lad, you can type it as well if you want and let that install. It's also a good idea to run a sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade while we're at it uh, to keep everything up to date and upgraded. Once all of those tools and programs are installed, we can then go back to our grub file, so sudo nano uh, slash etc slash default slash grub, and go back to the exact same line that we were in and add a few extra things, including kvm.ignore underscore mrss equals one. Uh, we're using that because we're using a, a fairly recent version of Windows, and so uh, we don't want Windows to blue screen when uh, if that's not enabled. 
We will also want to give it all of the PCIe IDs that we uh, noted down earlier, which we do by adding vfio-pcie.ids uh, equals, and then all of your PCIe IDs, separate them by commas, and we're good to go. Again, write out, enter, and exit that file. We can then also run sudo update-grub and then reboot the system once that's done. Uh, bear in mind that now we have actually passed the GPU through to a virtualized, virtualized environment, and so the secondary graphics card and any USB hubs or anything else that you pass through will now not be accessible from your host OS from Ubuntu, so make sure that your primary graphics card is connected and all good. I would still recommend having a secondary monitor or just a secondary cable connected to your monitor from your second graphics card to keep it active as that's going to be important in a second. Once the system has booted back up we can verify that our pass-through has worked by running again in terminal lspci space dash nnv and it should tell you or there should be a line uh, right next to your graphics card that says kernel driver in use uh, VFOO-PCIe. If it doesn't, then verify that you have uh, A, put all of the PCIe IDs in correctly in your grub file, and B, that your graphics card is actually connected to a display as well. Now we're ready to make the VM. Now you can do this in command line if you'd prefer, but there is a GUI program called Vert Manager that makes it really simple and easy to use and easy to show and understand, so we're going to use that instead. Now you will need a Windows ISO available and you know on the system to use. If you have a Windows PC already, then you can use the media creation tool to create an ISO, uh, which is super simple, super easy to use. Just go to uh, search Windows media creation tool, download the program and run it through. It's nice and easy. And then copy that to a USB stick or whatever and plug that USB stick into our system. You will also need to download the Vert.io drivers that will be linked in the description down below for Windows so that our VM knows how to boot a Windows ISO and then we can go about actually creating the VM. You can do that again through Vert Manager, create a new VM and run through the setup. You want to select uh, the ISO as uh, the Windows ISO as our main boot media and you can set how many cores and how much RAM you want to pass through as well. You will also need to select a storage method. Now you can pass an entire uh, drive into the VM and use that as your main you know, OS drive for your VM but in my case I'm just creating a virtual disk and setting it to half the size of my one terabyte SSD as that's going to be plenty for me at least right now. You can also create an Ethernet bridge if you want fast connectivity between your Linux machine and your Windows one, but NAT pass through is going to work fine for now, at least for me anyway. Now, when you get to the last page, make sure that you check the box that says Customize Configuration Before Installed so that you can set the chipset to Q35 and the firmware to UEFI instead of BIOS. You will then want to modify the disk and CD-ROM settings as by default they're IDE and we probably want them to be SATA. Make sure you click apply when you change all of those settings and then we can go and add another disk driver, a CD-ROM device with the Vert IO drivers, again making sure it's a SATA device. We can then pass through our PCIe devices like our USB hubs and our graphics card, so click add hardware, PCIe host device and select all of the devices that we've already passed through or we've already assigned to be passed through uh, from the list and you just need to add each one as you go. Then before we finish make sure that you go to the boot options list and select all three drives before we go to finish. There are a couple of other optimizations that you might want to do and those will be linked in the description down below especially for Ryzen systems but if you're using a Nvidia graphics card like me there is one thing that you have to do because when you boot into Windows, if you don't do this fix, you will get a code 43 error, which is NVIDIA's way of saying you didn't pay us enough money for a Quadro, so we're not going to let you use this clearly functional and supported feature. I know. Great. Either way, at least for the time being, it's fairly easily defeated. What you need to do is go to the XML configuration instead of the visual side, uh, press the Edit XML button, and add um, these couple of bits to 
the XML file. So under the Features tab, add a new heading for Hyper-V and add a subheading to that for vendor underscore ID with a value of state equals quote on and value equals any 12 string character. Also under the Hyper-V tag, add KVM hidden uh, state equals on and then you're good. Those are again on screen, you can add those to your file, save it, and then when you run the system, you should be able to boot into Windows or boot into the Windows setup, run through the setup process pretty much as normal, and then you should see the Windows, or you should see Windows on your secondary display or I guess coming from your second uh, graphics card, and you should be kind of set and ready. Of course, don't forget that your standard mouse and keyboard, at least while plugged into your main host OS, won't work until you plug it into one of the pass-through ports or maybe a second set of peripherals, or if you're using a KVM like the one in the M27Q, that also works as well. Either way, that is a rough beginner's guide on how to get started and to get over a couple of the hiccups that happens with my system and uh, me setting up. If you have any questions, do feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And if you want a much more detailed and much more expert uh, written guide on this, it's linked in the description by Matthias Hubert. I've probably said that wrong and I apologize, um, but he is much more knowledgeable than I, and he's written a number of extra posts, including things like Ryzen optimizations and a few other tips and tricks that you might want to follow. His guide is technically using slightly older version of QMU and Vert Manager, and so it, you have to translate things to, to the new versions, but either way, uh, it's fantastic, and I highly recommend you check it out. Again, that's linked in the description down below. Otherwise, that's pretty much it for this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this setup process, the system in general, and if you would go through setting up a system like this, or if, you know, two graphics cards and Linux gaming is just too much for you feel free to let me know in those comments down below. If you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday basis, of course you can subscribe if you aren't already, or you can check out the links in the description down below. There's a load of different stuff like affiliate links for people like Overclock UK or Amazon. There's also merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one, Patreon if you want to get access to our Money Men Discord chat and sponsor free videos or a load of other stuff too. I will leave the M27Q video on the end cards for you to check out, but otherwise that's pr pretty much it. So thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.